Good morning. We are in Exodus chapter 16 today. Um, let's go ahead and pray, and then we will read this text. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, God Almighty, please, please show us mercy today. Provide for us from your word. Help us to know. Help us to remember. Please remind us how much we need you every day. God, please um, humble us, make us teachable. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, Exodus chapter 16. They set out from Elam, and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they de had departed from the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to be full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to be full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumbled against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up from and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, eat, er, gather of it each one of you as much as he can eat. You shall take each take an omer according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake, and boil what you will boil. And all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning, as Moses commanded them. And it did not stink, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is of Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? 
See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in, in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations, so that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer of manna in it, and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate the manna forty years, till they came to a habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. And Omer is the tenth part of an ephah. God's word to us today in Exodus. All right. This is a very cool passage. Let us begin by observing. Okay. So we see that the Israelites came to the wilderness of sin and started grumbling against Moses and Aaron. They accused Moses and Aaron of bringing them into the wilderness to starve them to death. They say they would rather have died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt. God says he will send bread from heaven to test whether or not they will walk in his law. God says they are to be reminded of the glory of the Lord. He says their grumbling is not against Moses and Aaron, but against him. The glory of the Lord appeared to the whole congregation in a cloud. The Lord heard their grumbling. At twilight they will eat meat in the morning. At twilight they will eat meat. In the morning they will, they will eat bread. Um, he says, Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. The people are only to gather what they need for the day. Anything extra will spoil. On the sixth day, they are to gather for the Sabbath. God gave them the Sabbath, Sabbath so that they would rest. They're commanded to save some of the manna and keep it as a testimony. And they ate manna for 40 years. Okay. There's a lot in this passage. Um, I mean, it seems like every time we look and a new chapter here, we're, we're seeing just so many really rich motifs of God's mercy, His power, and the way He deals with the Israelites in such an amazing way. But this passage starts off with the people of Israel actually grumbling against Aaron and Moses. So we remember what just happened, how they were praising the Lord for deliverance, how the Egyptians were um, cast into the sea. Um, they were overwhelmed by the power of the Lord. And we are about six weeks later here. And I mean, six weeks can seem like a long time. But even so, they have already forgotten, it seems, what happened to deliver them. They're blaming Moses and Aaron for bringing them out into the wilderness to kill them with hunger. Forgetting that it was God who delivered them. That's the whole song they sang was praising God for his deliverance. That he's in control. And furthermore, they not only are they communicating their fear of starving, but they're actually saying they would have rather died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. And that's no small thing, because remember what God was doing in the land of Egypt. He was judging the Egyptians. Right? He was judging them. So that hand that they would have died by would have, would have been God's judgment against them. That hand of judgment coming against the people that were not his own. The Egyptians were not God's people. Their hearts were hardened and they refused to obey the Lord. So the people of Israel, by saying they would have 
rather died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, are in a way saying, we wish we weren't God's people. We would rather have full bellies than to be hungry and be God's people. That is grievous. That is an incredibly <laughs> wrong, sinful, awful thing to say to the Lord who just saved them from slavery. But God hears their grumbling. And yeah, as we read these things, I don't think, I think we need to not make the mistake that God didn't have a plan here, right? He knew they were going to become hungry. He is taking them through these things to teach them. And he says that in this passage. But he says, I hear the grumbling, and it's not against you, Moses and Aaron. It's against me. Um, it is against the Lord that they are grumbling. But he is patient, and he brought them here intentionally to teach them a lesson that they depend on him daily, whether they realize it or not. So when he commands them to um, pick up this manna daily and wait for these quail daily, he is commanding them to rely on him daily. And it's interesting that uh, this manna comes in the morning. It stays around long enough for them to gather it. What they gather, it sounds from the passage as though it doesn't matter how much they gather, they have just enough. And if they don't gather a lot, they still have enough. So it says they gathered some, some more, some less, but when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. So they're going out and gathering what they can. If they can only find a little bit, because there's, remember, there's like a million plus people here. Um, they go out and gather. You find only a little bit, it's enough. You're greedy and you get, get a whole bunch. Well, it's still just what you need. That in and of itself is a miracle, let alone the manna fall, falling to the ground being a miracle. And they're commanded to not keep it until the next day. They're commanded on the sixth day to gather for the seventh because they are to rest. Now, um, as might be expected, people like to um, feel secure. They like to save. Right? They don't like to wait and trust God. <laughs> so uh, some of them gather extra and try to keep it to the next day. And what happens? It breeds worms and stinks. Now, I remember when I was young and heard this passage taught, I thought, well, good grief. What in the world must all the places they travel to smell like if this stuff breeds worms and stinks? Because um, there's all this manna laying on the ground. Well, um, what I didn't realize because I wasn't listening very carefully, apparently, is that anything that wasn't gathered was melted by the sun and it just kind of goes away. Because this is clearly a miraculous event. Um, they're provided for daily. And then, so on the, on the sixth day, they're, they're told to keep extra for the seventh and they're to rest. So these people who have just spent um, six days, you know, learning to follow the law of the Lord. Uh, on the seventh, forget, apparently, to do what God says. Um, and some of them go out to gather. Um, and the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? He is trying to teach them that or teach them to keep his commandments. And the big commandment here at this point is the Sabbath. You are to rest. You are to have rest. And we'll see later in Exodus where um, that becomes a, a much even more solidified commandment to them. But he is teaching them here. 
through active, hands-on learning, right? Here, this, these six days you gather and work, work, work and gather. You will eat. On the seventh, you rest. It's like, it has to be this way. You have no extra these six days. On the seventh, the extra will remain so that you don't have to work. And these people are like, I don't know. I just can't do what God tells me to do. I have, I, it's almost like some of them have to try to do the opposite thing of what God is telling them to do. Or maybe they just weren't listening, which I suppose is a problem in and of itself. There could have been people out gathering manna who were like, well, I don't care what he says. I'm going out. This stuff, the last six days, it went bad. I'm going out again to find something because I don't trust what they said. Or maybe some of them weren't listening when Moses told them about the Sabbath. And they went out and they're like, oh, wait, what, what's going on? Uh, why, why is there no manna out here? Whatever the case, they need to listen and they need to obey. That's what we also need to do. And daily trust God for everything. And their very life, they're trusting Him daily. So it's not just the big miracles, the big signs and wonders. Um, although I would, I would probably argue that um, every day some miraculous bread falling from heaven is a pretty big sign and wonder. But um, I would also think that after 40 years of it, it would get a little bit mundane. They'd be like, oh yeah, it's the manna again. Time to get the manna. Um, but it's not just the big miracles like the Red Sea parting or the pillar of cloud and fire, the stuff that's epic. It's this daily provision through which God is showing them that he is their God and that he will take care of them. And he is requiring them to trust him every single day. And this, this is the people who said they would rather have been judged in Egypt, that they would have died, rather died by his hand than to be out in the wilderness and be hungry in his favor. And he's still so merciful and he decides to provide for them. He is teaching them and he is teaching us as well. So my conclusion now, my conclusion is this. Um, we tend to look for miraculous signs to assure us that God is for us. God's care for us is displayed as he gives us only what we need, as we need it, to remind us of our reliance on him. And God doesn't provide for us in the same exact way, by raining down food from heaven. But make no mistake, he is providing for us daily. We are still in his sovereign hands we are completely reliant on him. If the very breath in our lungs is a gift from him, how can we say we do anything on our, in our own power? If he chooses to give us breath each day, how can we say any choice we make from that point on is our own? And by that I mean um, not ultimately finding its source in him right uh, not that we don't make any choices <clears throat> but um, again we need to be reminded that we are reliant on him every day just as the Israelites were reminded here in Exodus let's pray Father God we need you we need you daily we need you more than we realize God, thank you for the times when you bless us by reminding us in very real ways how much we are reliant on you. God, don't allow us, please, don't allow us to ever think that we truly provide for ourselves or, or um, can do this on our own. God, daily allow us to go out and do the work you have for us but remembering that it is you who bring the provision. We love you and we need you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, I will see you again. Have a great day.